Judgment, a short story written and narrated by Robert Fairhead from the Tall and True Writer's Website. The policewoman at the front of the court is trying to catch my eye. I have a thing for women in uniform. It's what attracted me to my wife. That night we met at the pub across the road from the hospital where she worked as a nurse. I couldn't stop fantasising about the front zip on her uniform. The policewoman is mouthing something, her lips forming the words, Guilty or not guilty? I shake my head vigorously, partly to banish the thoughts of my wife's zip and the policewoman's lips, a mouth back, Not guilty. She shuffles some papers before signalling the same query to the beefy bloke sitting beside me. Not guilty. I hear him mumble. But in his too tight suit, I measure up beefy as guilty as charged. The policewoman shifts her attention to the next case. A 50-something woman doled up like she's come to court from a senior's escort agency. Not guilty. She whispers huskily. Ha! I want to laugh aloud. But I feel like crying too because the policewoman must be prioritising cases. And I realise the more who plead not guilty, the longer I could be stuck in court. I close my eyes and try not to think about beefy sweating beside me, or doled up's wafting perfume, or my wife, or the policewoman. Instead, I rehearse my defence for the unpaid parking fines. It's an honest oversight, Your Honour, I'll explain. I forgot to change my address when my wife and I separated. I'm banking on a sympathetic judge, but it's nine months since the separation, and I should have updated my address by now. The truth is, I'm hoping my wife and I can smooth out our rocky relationship. It was my fault. I should have been more attentive. If only she'd occasionally slipped into her old nurse uniform. The judge enters the court, and proceedings begin. The policewoman has prioritised guilty cases, with the judge dispensing fines and sentences like an assembly line worker. And then it's the turn of those of us pleading not guilty. The policewoman calls doled up first, charged with hitting an escort agency client over the head with an umbrella. Ha, I was right. He made an improper suggestion, she asserts indignantly. And after querying the suggestion, the judge records a good behaviour bond without conviction. Beefy is up next. Charged with stealing a car. Ha, again. I only borrowed it, he protests. I meant to leave a note, but I couldn't find a pen and paper. I'd expected Beefy to thunder like Thor, but he pleads his innocence in a squeaky, childlike voice. It sounds like he's been sucking on a helium birthday balloon, and the judge takes pity on him. Finally, it's my turn. Taking the stand, I try not to glance at the policewoman, and instead stare out at the others, also waiting to plead not guilty. I think of Beefy, and Doled Up, and my wife, and the policewoman, and I feel the court's judgement. Hi, I'm Robert Fairhead from Tall and True Short Reads, and the Tall and True Writer's Website. I wrote Judgment in October 2021 for the Australian Writers' Centre's 500-word short story writing competition, Furious Fiction. The brief was, the story must be set in a court of some kind, include a character who measures something, and contain the words balloon, rock, and umbrella. Longer variations were acceptable. After writing and submitting the story, my 17th straight entry, I shared a blog post on Tall and True about the experience. Writing True Sentences I revealed recalling Ernest Hemingway's advice to writers to write one true sentence and how I started my story with The policewoman at the front of the court is trying to catch my eye. I had a court setting and an opening scene to build upon with more true sentences, half-truths and pure imagination. For example, it's true a policewoman once tried to catch my eye in court and mouthed guilty or not guilty but my wife's never been a nurse. However, I dated a nurse before my marriage, so that part was a half-truth. The rest is imagination. As for balloon, rock and umbrella, I felt confident I'd find a place for the first two words, and I sweated on the third until it occurred to me why Doled Up might be attending court. In the Writing True Sentences blog post, I also quoted George Saunders, who observed, A short story will undergo hundreds of edits, It's done when it's done, 
I know it when I see it. It's the same for me and my stories. A shiver ran up my spine when I wrote the last sentence, and I feel the court's judgment. That spine-tingling feeling is how I know when it's done. I hope you pass favourable judgment on this episode. You can read Judgment and all my short stories, blog posts and other writing at tallandtrue.com. You can also buy my short story collections from the Amazon Kindle and Kobo online bookstores. Links are available in the show notes. The next episode of Tall and True Short Reads will be in your podcast feed shortly. In the meantime, don't forget to browse your feed or the podcast website, tallandtrueshortreads.com, for earlier episodes from seasons one and two. And follow or subscribe to the podcast and rate and review it via your favourite app. Doing so helps me share my writing with other listeners. Please remember, you can support this podcast by making a small, regular or one-off donation via the ACAR supporter page. You'll find a link in the show notes. And finally, please tell your family and friends about Tall and True Short Reads and the Tall and True Writers website. 